His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa received at Safriya Palace the Representatives Council Speaker Ahmed bin Salman Lim Salam and the Shura Council Chairman Ali bin Saleh Al Saleh, the second Deputy Speaker and the Deputy Chairman of the Shura Council, as well as the members of the reply to the Royal Speech, uh, speech uh, Committees at the two councils, where they submitted to His Majesty the King the two councils' replies to the keynote speech delivered by His Majesty the King during the opening of the second session of the sixth legislative term. His Majesty the King congratulated them on the Kingdom's national days, wishing Bahrain and its people many happy returns. His Majesty affirmed his endeavor to achieve the best for the people of Bahrain and to fulfill their aspirations by solidarity, highlighting the keenness to achieve all that is positive for the Kingdom. He affirmed the citizens' constant desire to achieve success, reflecting the true nature of the Bahrainis, who are ambitious and always seek to reach excellence in all fields at various events. His Majesty the King expressed thanks and appreciation to the Shura Council Chairman and Speaker for their dedicated and commendable efforts in serving the nation and its citizens, lauding the innumerable important achievements of the legislative authority in supporting the Kingdom's development process in all fields and in undertaking their oversight and legislative role within its constant and endeavors to strengthen the pillars of the National Democratic March. His Majesty hailed the constructive initiatives and proposals included in the two councils' replies to the royal speech regarding the means of enhancing performance, praising the ongoing consensus and coordination between the executive and legislative authorities and their constructive cooperation, which is one of the pillars of the development and modernization process in Bahrain. His Majesty the King expressed pride in Bahraini citizens' dedication to serve in their homeland in all fields, noting that the Bahraini society has always been known for its authentic values of tolerance, coexistence and pluralism which contributed to its strength and solidarity and enhanced Bahrain's status as a distinguished global civilizational role model. The Shura Chairman, Speaker and attendees extended deepest thanks and gratitude to His Majesty the King for his unwavering support and follow-up on the Legislative Authority and his commendation of its achievements and gains to serve Bahrain and its citizens. Speaker Lim Salam affirmed that the royal directives are the basis for national action to increase national achievements through fruitful legislature executive cooperation aiming to serve the citizens, voicing pride in His Majesty the King's support to parliamentary work. Lim Salam commended the unwavering interest of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa in strengthening the ongoing fruitful cooperation, communication and approach within the legislative authority as well as the support of joint efforts and coordination between the government and the two councils to achieve national goals. The Shura Council Chairman asserted that His Majesty the King's addresses are the roadmap for legislative achievements and the development of parliamentary work, expressing pride in His Majesty the King's support for legislative work and the role played by the lawmakers in activating and implementing the royal directives by enacting laws and updating the law system which ensures the steady growth and progress of the kingdom in all fields. As-Saleh noted that the remarkable integration and cooperation between the legislative and executive authorities will increase developmental and national successes, paying tribute to His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister for supporting and following up on the joint efforts between the government and the Shura and Representatives Council.
A telephone call was held between His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa and the Vice President of the United States Kamala Harris. During the call, His Royal Highness highlighted the strength of the Bahrain-U.S. strategic partnership and noted the U.S. pivotal role alongside various allies in pursuing international peace and security and furthering regional and international development. His Royal Highness and the Vice President also explored ways to further the bilateral partnership and discuss the latest regional and international developments of common interest. His Majesty the King's Representative for Humanitarian Work and Youth Affairs, His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa, yesterday received His Highness Sayyid the Yazan bin Haytham bin Tariq Al Saeed in the presence of the Secretary General of the Supreme Council for Youth and Sports, Ayman Al Muayyad, the Minister of Information, Dr. Ramzan Al Naimi, and the Minister of Youth Affairs, Rawan Tawfiqi. His Highness Sheikh Nasser hailed the depth of relations between the two countries in all fields in light of the fraternal approach existing between the GCC countries. He expressed aspiration that this visit will increase cooperation in all fields, especially in the youth and sports field. El Mu'ayyad presented the Kingdom's plans and achievements in the youth and sports fields. His Highness Sayyid the Yazan hailed the advanced level Bahrain reached in empowering and supporting the youth thanks to the support and follow-up of His Highness Sheikh Nasser. He noted the relations between the two countries and wished further progress and prosperity to the Bahraini youth. His Majesty the King's Representative for Humanitarian Work in Youth Affairs, His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa, yesterday bid farewell to Oman's Minister of Culture, Youth and Sports, His Highness Sayyid the Yazan bin Haytham bin Tariq Al Saeed, following an official visit where he met with His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa, His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, and a number of senior officials to discuss ways of enhancing the fraternal relations between the two countries. Also present were the Chairman of the Board of Trustees of the Isa bin Salman Education Charitable Trust and Chairman of the Board of Directors of Tamkeen, His Highness Sheikh Isa bin Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa and senior officials. The Representatives Council held its weekly session presided over by its speaker Ahmed Lamsalam. The session discussed the government's policy on investment projects of social insurance organization and discussions on the status of the retirees after the annual increase was stopped and voluntary uh, retirement was offered to employees. The council also discussed a proposal on postponing the collection of end of service benefit for foreign workers in the private sector and decided to reject it. The Representatives Council Speaker Ahmed Lamsalam met with the delegation from the diplomatic communities from the Oxford University, King College and the London School of Economics and Political Science on the occasion of their visit to the Kingdom. During the meeting, Elim Selim expressed pride in the depth and strength of relations a strategic partnership with the UK, which is based on a long history of cooperation, understanding and coordination, and the close ties between the two friendly countries in light of the support of His Majesty the King and His Majesty the King of the United Kingdom of Great Britain and Northern Ireland. He affirmed a parliamentary support to strengthen Bahraini-British relations in all developmental paths and keenness on continuing cooperation with the British Parliament to achieve common interests. It's been a pleasure to be welcomed uh, here to the Parliament of Bahrain um, and we've had such a nice experience so far. We've spoken to a number of ministers, ambassadors, etc. Um, we feel very, very welcomed here in Bahrain and we've enjoyed the culture, um, we enjoyed the foods, Bahraini foods. Um, and yeah, we feel, we feel very, very welcomed here. It's been an absolute pleasure to come today to the House of Representatives where we saw an in-session plenary and we heard from two ministers, the Minister for Sustainable Development and the Minister for Youth and Sport, and it was a real privilege to hear their thoughts uh, and take questions uh, from the ministers. This morning we had the privilege of having an interactive session with the speaker where we were able to ask questions and try and understand the Bahraini political system better. Um, he answered all our questions 
very informatively and it definitely helped us to understand how politics works in Bahrain. The Attorney General Ali al received the Acting Attorney General and Special Investigations Unit SIU Chief Mohammed al Hazza, who presented him with the annual report of the SIU during the previous year. Al Bu'ainin affirmed that Bahrain has been leading regionally in establishing several national agencies and mechanisms aimed at protecting and promoting human rights and ensuring basic freedoms, especially in the criminal system. He highlighted SIU's efforts in providing its ability to fulfill its role in achieving justice and enforcing the rule of law. The Attorney General commended the efforts of the head of the unit, its members and all its employees in taking all the necessary legal measures in crime cases with integrity, independence and objectivity, which resulted in continued decline in complaints rates of more than 80%. The chief of SIU expressed appreciation for the Attorney General's support and affirmed the unit's keenness to carry out the tasks entrusted to it to enhance respect for human rights and ensure accountability. The Sustainability Forum Middle East launched its second edition in the presence of the Minister of Oil and Environment Special Envoy for Climate Affairs, Dr. Mohammed bin Mbarak bin Dayna. More in this report. The forum focused on highlighting solutions for accelerating regional decarbonization through the facilitation of dialogue and cooperation and hands-on learning. This is a fantastic event for the Kingdom of Bahrain, the first big sustainability forum event in 2024. This is a topic that of course is very important for not only the Kingdom of Bahrain, but the entire region. We had a fantastic COP28 in Dubai recently, some very uh, uh, action oriented results from COP28, and now at this conference we're ready to start to put those into action. We are leading in a lot of the areas in sustainability and uh, carbon management and uh, mitigation of climate change. So I think it's a fantastic opportunity for Bahrain to showcase what we're doing here in the kingdom. We're now getting beyond the stage of discussion and now getting into action planning. And this is what's really important. This year's theme focused on achieving net zero pathways to accelerating implementation. Bahrain is uh, exhibiting a lot of leadership um, in decarbonization, in the development of renewable energy sources and the transition to net zero. We have more than 400 guests here today, including um, delegates and speakers that have come from around the world to be here. And we are uh, looking forward to discussing high-level solutions, um, engaging in dialogue, and you know, together coming up with ways to accelerate this journey to net zero. The second edition featured a number of keynote addresses from leading climate and sustainability experts and panels made up of governments and business leaders. APM Terminals is very happy to be here. We're, we were invited to participate in this um, sustainability um, forum. It's the first time for me, um, but as a sponsor, certainly gives us exposure uh, to our ambitions and our um, uh, decarbonization plans, which very much support the, uh, the Bahrain government's vision for reducing decarbonization, reducing CO2 emissions. Um, and we're here to support the event. Uh, hopefully we will be able to showcase what um, our roadmap looks like. It definitely supports the, the government's initiatives. Um, and I'll be talking this morning about uh, the, the importance of pr public and private partnerships and hopefully we can shed some light on, on how we're adding value to the economy as well. The forum took a serious approach to highlighting the urgent need for business leaders not simply to announce net zero and sustainability strategies but to take concrete steps to accelerate their implementation. Reporting for Bahrain International, this is Fatman Najam. The Minister of Justice, Islamic Affairs and Waqf, Nawaf al Mu'awda, and the Saudi Minister of Hajj and Umrah, Dr. Tawfiq al Rabi'a, in the presence of the head of Bahrain Hajj Mission, Sheikh Adnan al Ghattan, signed the Hajj Affairs Agreement for the Hajj year 1445. As part of the early preparations for this year's Hajj season, within the Minister's visit to Saudi Arabia to participate in the Hajj and Umrah Conference and Exhibition 2024. The minister hailed the efforts of the Hajj and Umrah ministry to serve pilgrims and the keenness on the continuous coordination to facilitate the Hajj and Umrah affairs for Bahraini pilgrims. 
The Minister of Industry and Trade, Abdullah bin Adil Fakhro, met with the British Minister of State for Trade Policy, Greg Hans. Fakhro stressed the depth of the historical relations between the two kingdoms, pointing out to the need to enhance cooperation in the field of trade and investment by expanding trade exchange to develop competitive capabilities and trade and investment relations in multiple fields. The meeting reviewed topics of common interest and ways to develop and increase the volume of bilateral investments. The General Directorate for Verdict Enforcement and Alternative Sentencing at the Ministry of Interior received the International Accreditation Certificate from the American Correctional Association for the Ministry's Open Presence Program as the first entity outside the U.S. to obtain the accreditation, which reflects the level of high professionalism and performing and quality of work as well as the commitment of all participants and standards followed globally in the field of rehabilitation and reintegration into society in a manner that guarantees human rights. The program represents an advancement and development in the field of application of alternative sentencing and open presence, and the remarkable international attention it receives. One of the most prominent goals of the program is providing exemplary opportunities for beneficiaries of the open presence program to gradually return and integrate into society. As per the directives of the Minister of Interior and Chairman of the Ministerial Committee for Information, Communication and Technology, General Sheikh Rashid bin Abdullah Al Khalifa, the Household Income and Expenditure Survey 2024 has been officially launched. The announcement was made by IGA Deputy Chief Executive of Statistics and Population Registry, Dua Al Harban, who said that the survey will run from January to December 2024. The survey aims to gather data from around 6,000 Bahraini and non Bahraini households to understand household expenditure on goods, identify the most commonly used goods and services contributing to the GDP, and observe the price changes of these goods. It also supports the development of governmental, economic, social and environmental policies and programs. And to delve deeper into this uh, significant national survey, we're delighted to welcome via telephone Information and E-Government Authority Deputy Chief Executive of Statistics and Population Registry, Dua Al Harban, who will share more details about this initiative. Welcome, Dua Al Harban. Can you tell us uh, what are the reasons for conducting this national survey and what are its goals? Uh, actually, the Household Income Expenditure Survey is a globally recognized practice. Most countries uh, all around the world uh, conduct uh, the survey through their statistical agencies. Uh, so, similar to other countries, the Kingdom of Bahrain carries out the survey using international uh, accepted methodologies and uh, forms based on international recommendations. Uh, previously and historically, Bahrain conducted uh, the survey every 10 years, uh, aligning with many other countries. And in the future, inshallah, we are hoping to conduct it every five years. Uh, house, household income and expenditure survey will not cover all the households in Bahrain. Uh, instead, it randomly selects a sample of around 6,000 households, both Bahrainis and non-Bahrainis. Uh, the sample will be uh, served through the, the year. So each month we will have different uh, sa uh, sample of households. Each household will be se uh, served for one month only, approximately four times by a researcher. Uh, the survey consists of three forms. The first one, uh, the first one, uh, filled during the researcher's visit, gathers data about housing characteristics and family members residing at the address. The second form, also completed during the visit, details the family's uh, spending on durable goods and services, like electrical appliances, car purchases, home maintenance, health uh, care services, etc. The third form is a diary where the selected family logs on daily basis all, the, all their uh, expenditures on goods and services over a month. The survey aims to understand household spending patterns, the most consumed goods and services, and the demographic, social, 
and economic factors influencing these uh, patterns. And what is the process of this national survey? Well, uh, uh, the data collection uh, will be in both methodologies. A call center through the number 17878070 and a field visit by, by our 35 researchers. Uh, we encourage everyone to contribute to the success of this national survey by participating and providing accurate information. Uh, inshallah, we are trying to assure the public that uh, uh, the fa all the faces of the survey will be confidential uh, and the immediate results will outline the list of goods, as we mentioned, uh, all the goods and services on which families spend, and this data definitely will contribute to calculation of the consumer price index, a vital economic indicators, along with several other social, socioeconomic, and environmental indicators. And that was information in e-government authority, Deputy Chief Executive of Statistics and Population Registry, Dua Al Harban. Thank you very much for joining us. The Assistant Under Secretary for Sanitation at the Ministry of Works, Engineer Fathi Al Farah, affirmed that the fourth expansion project for the Tubli Sewage Water Treatment Plan will contribute to increasing the capacity of the current plant, noting that the overall completion rate reached 77%. He stated that many steps have been completed, including the construction of the sewage conveyor line between the collection room for the main lines and the main pumping station using special tunneling technology. The construction of a sewer line using deeper excavation technology was also completed. He added that the work is currently underway to establish a sewer line linking the old and the new station and an emergency line to the sea as the completion rate of this part of the project has reached 85%.